There is no water. We've enough for the night. We we'll rest here. My people are growing angry, Uncle. See that the water is shared out fairly. As you command. There is discontent among our people, too, sir. He speaks the truth, husband. Tell him to make fires and prepare the food. Do as he says, Eliza. Listen to me. You know what God has commanded, but you don't know God. These idols are all you know. Who made the earth you're sitting on? Who made the rocks, the sky, this thing? This thing of clay? No, God did. The one God, the only true God. Shall I tell the story? Close your eyes. In the beginning, there was nothing. There was darkness. And God said, let there be light. God separated the light from the darkness. And the light he called day. And the darkness he called night. And that was the first day. On the second day, God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God called the dome sky. On the third day, God said, let the waters be gathered together and let dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth the waters that had gathered together he called sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth green things, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind. On the fourth day, God said, let there be lights in the sky to give light on earth. Let them be for signs, seasons, days, and years. On the fifth day, God said, let the waters bring forth living creatures. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the seas and the earth. On the sixth day, God said, let us make humankind in our own image and likeness. And so it was. And God saw all that he had made. And he saw that it was indeed good. And so all the heavens and the earth were made, and all their multitudes of living things. And on the seventh day, God rested. And God formed a man from the dust of the earth.
from Adam's side, and from it made a woman. And that is why a man leaves his father and mother and marries a wife, and they are joined together as one. Adam called the woman Eve. God made a garden for them in Eden in the east. They were naked, but they were not ashamed. In the middle of Eden grew the tree of knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil. And God said to Adam, you can eat the fruit of every tree in the garden save one, the tree of knowledge. Its fruit is forbidden to you. If you eat it, you will die. All the creatures in the garden. The serpent was the most cunning. The serpent tempted Eve. Eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. You won't die. Your eyes will be open. And you'll be as God himself, knowing good and evil. the fruit and she gave it to Adam to eat and their eyes were open and they knew they were naked and they were ashamed and they tried to hide from God but how could they hide from him he found them out he gave them clothes to wear he heard what the serpent had done God cursed the serpent, saying, On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat. As for Adam and Eve, he cast them out of Eden. So it was that evil came into the world, and Cain, the son of Adam, killed his brother Abel. All of you are the descendants of that first man, Adam. I, Abraham, am descended from his son, Seth, and from Noah, who made the ark that floated on the waters of the great flood that God sent down in the ancient days. He made you! You know what God has commanded me? Go out from your country to a land I will show you. Seek out my holy law so that you may live in that land in righteousness and peace. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be an example and a blessing to the people. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. In you all the families of the earth will be blessed. I trust in the voice of God. I follow his command. Will you trust in God? I trust in God. You have no rights here. I have the same rights as you. 
My master and yours are equal. Lot, the equal of Abraham. I think not. The time is coming when my master will be greater than yours. Abraham is a deceiver. Be careful, Rabban. You know what they say. There is no land. There is no God. The old man is mad. <laughs> He insulted you. This is not the way. Misters. God has been good to us since we came here. Our flocks and herds have increased greatly. But because there isn't pasture enough, strife has grown up between your people and mine. There must be no argument between us, Lot. You are my kin, and I love you like a son. The time has come for us to separate. I give you first choice of all the land. If you go to the left hand, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right hand, I'll go to the left. My lord. Ah, oh, it grieves me also. If I had given you a son, you would not feel it as you do. Don't be afraid, Abraham. I am with you. Your reward will be great. What will you give me, Lord? I'm still childless. I have no heir. When I die, all that I have will pass to strangers. Look up. Count the stars if you can. No man can count them. In the same way, no man will be able to count the number of your descendants. Nothing that you have will pass to strangers. The heir to your house will be your own son. My own son? Do you believe this? Yes. I trust in you. You know I can't bear you any children. Are you saying I should take a concubine? Many men have concubines. You know the custom. Not my custom. No. I never wanted another woman but you. Now you speak foolishness. No, I believe in the Lord. I believe he will... He will bless us with a son. How? How? Unless you take another wife. Sarah, I love only you. I will never take another wife. You must, if the Lord's promise is to be fulfilled. All I ever wanted was to give you children. I know it. I know the grief it has been for you. But Sarah... I'll never stop loving you. Oh, soft words. 
true words. I will never take another wife. Then I don't understand. No more do I. She's young and strong. She'd give you a healthy child. What are you talking about, woman? She's beautiful, too. Hey, girl. Don't you think she's beautiful? She's a servant girl. She's an Egyptian. You speak foolishness. What does that matter? Take Hagar, my maid, and let not the promises of God fail through me. Through her, I will continue your hereditary line. I offer you this, and you call me foolish? You must have a child. I can see it now. Go to her. Go tonight. Six pieces, tens, my friends. Yours, perhaps, not mine. Seven. Ten. Again, you dare to answer me? Yes, I do. Silence. I won't be silent. You will. You'll do as I order you. Or what? You'll beat me with your husband's child in my belly. What is this? Sacrifice my honor for your sake. And what is my reward? The girl won't do her work. Each time I give her orders, she answers me with insolence. And I've had enough. The work is too hard. I am with child. My wife is still my wife, and you are still her servant. You must obey her. He will be a hunter. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand will be against him.
have a son. God, listen! I name him Ishmael! <laughs> Sarah, prepare food quickly. Who are they? Where's your wife, Sarah? There, in the tent. She will have a son. said she would have a son. I did not laugh. Is there any wonder so great that the Lord may not perform it? I hardly dare believe it. <laughs> Push, baby. Push. 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 Is there any wonder so great that the Lord may not perform it? he doing? Take him away. He loves your son like a brother should.
they are brothers. It is you who are full of hatred. Hatred of my son. Hatred of me. Go. We'd say nothing against you. We do nothing against you, yet you hate us. Get out of my sight! Go. Go now. Come. Come, Ishmael. Get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that slave woman's son will never share inheritance with my son, Isaac. I can't better look at her. Or her son! I won't endure them any longer! Go! Where should I go? Hagar, the Lord's hand has been in this from the beginning. Where should I go? How should I live? You shall have all that you need. This is your son. It's all the Lord's work. You must believe. You put Isaac before Ishmael. That's what I believe. your son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to a place I will show you, and offer him there as a burnt offering. My son! Yes, your son. Why do you command this? Without blemish. Take it back to the flock. I don't understand. Are you ready, my son? <laughs> yes, father. But if you do not take a lamb, how will you make a burnt offering? Let's be gone. <laughs> Goodbye, mother. I can't go with you, son. son and I will worship and then return.
there, it's done. You must bind me, Father. In case my courage fails. that your faith is perfect because you would give to God what is most precious to you, your only son. Turn now, and you will see a sacrifice pleasing to God. Isaac come? He'll come. A sip of water, husband. Mm. Mm. Oh, sweet it tastes. We've been on a long journey together. Only once did I feel anger against you. I know. Would you have killed him? Yes, I would. Our only son. Yes. Oh. I had. Anger. I was filled with anger against God. I hated him. Yes, I did. I feel easier. But would I find forgiveness? How can you doubt it? You know him. In a way I never could. How can we trust? To know him is the task he has set for us. To seek out his law, to find it. We must find it. Only then can we live as he wants us to. Only then can we be an example and a blessing to the people. You have done this, husband. No. What I have done is just a beginning. The lifespan of one man is much too short. It is for our son and his sons. 
and the generations that follow to complete the work. Isaac, my son. Open the tent, please, husband. How oh, good it is to see the day. be comforted. He must take a wife. And not from among the Hittite women, from his own kin. You will go to Haran. I will guard him well. Don't you misunderstand me. You will go alone. Isaac will remain here. But how can I, a servant, choose a wife for my master's son? The Lord will make the choice, Eliezer. What if you should fall into some, some grave danger? Father, it's, it's a long way, isn't it? Yes. I wonder, will she be beautiful? Peace be with you. I've come a long way today. I'm thirsty. I have some water. Here's water, sir. What's your name? Rebecca, daughter of Bethuel. My camels are thirsty too. Bring them. I'll fill the trough. My name is Laban. Your master Abraham is our kin. My grandfather was his brother, Nahor. Then the Lord has been a faithful guide indeed. Before I came to the well, I stopped a little way off to pray. I saw the women fetching water. I said to the Lord, I will ask of them to drink. But they, being suspicious of strangers, will likely refuse. But if there be one who offers me, then she is the chosen one. And to make certain, let her also offer for my camels. Rebecca did all this, and she is also kin to my master. Sir, may I take Rebecca back with me to be wife to Isaac? Oh, fool that I am. Here are gifts from my master for the family of Isaac's bride. Good 
Is that Isaac? Yes. Yes, yes, he has. It was so strange. I suppose it must seem strange to you. It is, a little. Just a little. <laughs> it is very strange. But I believe it is God's will. Do you? So much in my life, Father. Too much. But, but never, never such a joy as this. You're pleased with your bride. Pleased? Pleased? I love her with all of my heart, Father. Ah, I'm glad, my son. <laughs> Let's rest here for a moment. She's a very beautiful girl. And she has wisdom, Father. She knows so much that I'm ignorant of. Wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge such as city folk acquire are very different things, my boy. I hope she has a gentle heart. Oh, Father, she has a, the best of hearts. Oh, 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 oh. Father. Oh, Father! Eliezer! Eliezer, quick! Ishmael. Brother. We have the same father. We're brothers. There must be no enmity between us. Bless, Father. Isaac or me? Why should I put Isaac above you or you above Isaac? Your paths will be separate, your ways different. My blessing is for.
receive this blessing. May the Lord give you of the dew of heaven and of the richness of the earth and grain and wine in plenty. She spoke harsh words to us. We did nothing wrong. Enough. I've been with the flocks all day. I'm tired. She hates us. Enough, I say! They grow more insolent every day. They whisper at the well, spreading rumors about me. Tell Esau to send them away. He loves them well. Do you love them? No. No. You couldn't bear to look on them, so you became blind. I can't bear to hear them, so I grow deaf. Is that Esau? Peace be with you, Father. Mother. Is that Esau's voice? Esau. I would be alone with Esau. Very well, husband. Sit by me here, my son. My son, I am near my death. You are no nearer than the last time you told me the same, Father. You know your poor father too well, Esau. Nevertheless, I am old and I am ill. So that there may be no mistake, so that all the people may know that you are to be the first before your brother Jacob. When I am gone, I will give you my blessing. Go out into the field, hunt game, and make me the savory dish that I delight in. Bring it to me, and I will bless you. Kiss me, my son. Esau has always been his favorite. There's nothing to be done. There is everything to be done. Go out, choose the best of the flock, and bring it to me. Who showed Esau how to make the savory dish? His mother. I'll prepare it. You will take it to your father and receive his blessing. You will be lord over Esau. But when he hears my voice, he'll know I'm not Esau. His deafness will prevent it. But what if he should touch me? Then he'd know. Do as I tell you, Jacob. This is your brother's, his best and costliest garment. I kept it for him. Otherwise, those Hittite women would steal it. Now, give me your arm. Is it Jacob? Esau, father. 
Is that Esau's voice? I've made the dish you asked for. So quickly. It was but a few hours ago you went out to hunt. God granted me success. Come near to me, my son. Come near and kiss me, my son. garment is the smell of the field. I will bless you. Receive this blessing. Let the people serve you. Be lord over your brother and let him bow down to you. Have you not a second blessing for me, Father? You know, there can only be one blessing, and it is sacred. Once given, it cannot be taken back. There is nothing to be done. Nothing! Jacob is Lord over you. You are not to blame. Oh, oh, oh. No, you are deceived. Rest. Until my father's dead, and then I'll kill Jacob. Esau will never kill me while my father still lives. You don't understand the power the Hittite women have over him. What can I do? You must go away. But where? To Haran, to my brother Laban's house. It won't be for long. Esau will tire of the Hittite women. He has a good heart. The danger will pass. Go now. And God be with you, my son. And with you, mother. Be with you. Do you know a man called Laban? We know Laban, all right. Could you direct me to his house? That's his daughter Rachel over there. Thank you. Peace be with you. Are you Rachel, daughter of Laban? Yes, I am. Then we are kin. I'm Jacob, son of Isaac and Rebecca. My father's sister. I must run and tell him. Will you wait, sir? Uh, what of your flock, cousin? I could watch them for you if you like.
There he is, Leia. That's Jacob. He is handsome. Even more handsome than you said, Rachel. How many mules does he have? Only one, I think. How many servants? None that I saw. Strange. His father Isaac is spoken of as a rich man. And our father, I'm sure, designs him as a husband for one of us. Which one? Well, I'm the eldest. Jacob, you plan to stay with us a while or travel on? My Lord Laban! No, 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 no. no. smile on your house. <laughs> I've got this back for you. Egyptian work, as you see, the very finest. Free to head on island. And five pieces to you, my lord. What do you think, Jacob? It's very fine, and a fair price. Send it to my house. My lord is a prince. I would have bargained with him and got it for less. Then you must forgive me, uncle. I thought the man knew you too well and valued your custom too highly to try to fool you. Well, I'm not often fooled, I'll grant you that. Ah, there are my daughters. Leia, now she knows how to drive a bargain. But I think you prefer Rachel. I think you love her. If I did, what use would it be? I brought no bride price with me. True, alas, that is a great impediment. And yet it may be overcome. How? Uh, how could it be overcome, Uncle? You could work with me for seven years. I would give you your keep and pay you no wages. Clever man, Jacob. I could make some good profit from you. And that would satisfy me as to bride price. Are you willing? I am willing. You must love her very much. With all my heart, Uncle. As I said before, I'm not often fooled. Stay. You knew me in the night, don't you remember? We are man and wife. How could you do this, Father? They kept me in my mother's room. They would not let me leave. You made me a prisoner! Your own daughter! Enough, girl! No, I will speak! You will obey me! Out! No! Out, I say! 
the custom here for the younger daughter to be married before the elder. I should have known that. Only the bride price was mentioned. The bride was never named. I have not broken our bargain. In the strict sense, that's true. Come. Leah is an excellent girl. Quick of wit, even of temper. Beautiful, too. She will make you a fine wife. Settle down with her, give her your heart. Dismiss Rachel from your thoughts. You know very well that I cannot. Shall I send her away? No. You'll be unhappy. Not if I have hope. You want Rachel, too? Yes. And I'll make the same bargain for her. Seven years. Very well. You must swear on the household gods that you mean me no trick. I don't believe in them. That's true, you don't. I'll swear by my own god, the one god. You may kill me if I play you false. You can marry her when Leia's wedding week is out. Yes, uncle. Then it's agreed. Rachel! <laughs> I don't understand, Jacob. My father cheated you as he cheats everyone. Why aren't you angry? What purpose would anger serve? He has what I want. The only thing I want. I still don't understand. On my journey here, I had a dream. I saw a great ladder that rose up into the heavens. The angels of God were ascending and descending in multitudes beyond number. I woke. I knew the meaning of the dream. What is it? Heaven and earth are joined together. God lives among us, unknown, unseen, but he sees us, he knows us. I wept for shame because I had so cruelly deceived my brother, for hatred of myself, for fear because God knew the secrets of my heart. I made a vow to change my ways, to be a better man, and God was merciful to me. He opened my heart so that I could love you. But it was a punishment, Jacob. You had no bride price. It was a test. Your father's trick against me is another, and harder. But I won't fail. Will you... Give me your forgiveness before I die, my son. I loved your brother better than you. I confess it. I could not help myself. Will you forgive me? You love him better still, mother. Yes. It is true. See how I am being punished for it. I will never see his face again. Never. Look. Even as I die, I weep for him. There's no trick this time. <laughs> you 
You've done very well. Under your care, my flocks have increased. Beyond those of any other man in Haran. But now... <sighs> it is time to pay you for your work. It's a painful thing to part with money. <laughs> very painful. Don't pay me, then. Let me take a share of the flocks. But how would we make the divisions? I trust you as you trust me, but in these matters there is always suspicion of false dealing on either side. It can be simply done. You take the best, all that are unspotted and of pure color. I'll take the least, those that are spotted. In this way, the beasts themselves will declare by their color to whom they belong. There can be no false dealing. Is it agreed? It is agreed. <laughs> what are you doing, Europe? These beasts are not of pure color. They're Jacob's beasts. No, sister. Till the bargain is sworn, they are my father's. You're stealing them. Don't you see? He's cheated you again. They're taking away all the spotted beasts to their own herd so we can't breed from them. We'll have only beasts of pure color, which we must give to my father. Put together two beasts of pure color, a male and a female, and what will their offspring be? Of pure color? No. Two such beasts will often produce offspring that are spotted. I've seen this many times, and something else. The spotted ones are hardier, their increase is greater, their meat is sweeter, their fleeces softer, their hides are better! your own slow wits and idleness that have cheated you, Yorin, not I. I've kept to the bargain I made with your father. To see that! Careful. I have men at my command, more than you and your brothers. We'll see. What he says is true. He's kept to the bargain we made. He's a sharper man than I. He's a deceiver. He has robbed us as he robbed his brother. He's a thief. What can I do? Kill him and take all he has. <laughs> they went in the night, Father. All of them. They took everything. The flocks, the gold, everything. But we can overtake them, Father. Yes. Yes. Make an end of it. What bargain do you offer me now, Jacob? I kept my promise. You know that's true. Your daughters and their children. Would you kill them for the sake of their worthless brothers? What would all your wealth be to you then, Laban? What would it be as you watched their blood run on the rocks and soak into sand? It would be nothing. We return to Haran. No! Do you dare to find me? Do you dare? Now 
I must go to Esau and ask his forgiveness. I'm the servant of your brother, Jacob. I bring gifts from him. What does my brother want with me? To meet with you, my lord. Where is my brother? On the far side of the river, at the fort of Jabok. Tell my brother that I will meet him here tomorrow, at the noontime. As my lord commands. Noon. Yes, my lord. He has fighting men with him, many of them. Bring our people over to this side of the river. I'll go over there. As my lord commands. I'll stay with you. No. You stay with the others. I have to be alone. I have to know what God wants of me. My heart moves me to be reconciled with my brother, but my head tells me there is great danger in it. That he may kill me. And you, and the children, and all our people. Stay here. Take it. It is rightly yours. How can you forgive me, Esau? I was with her mother when she died. I saw her grief. I saw the price she paid. It was enough. Take it. Wonderful coat, Father. <laughs> favor Joseph above your other sons. Do I? Perhaps there's truth in what you say, Duda. He has gifts I honor greatly. But then perhaps Benjamin is my favorite. He is my youngest. His mother is dead, yet still seems to live in him. But truth is... I love you and your brothers no less than Benjamin and Joseph who taught great foolishness to them. Look. 
had another dream last night, Father. Uh, must we hear it? Tell us, Joseph. I saw the sun and the moon and 11 stars, and they were all bowing down to me. The interpretation is this. The interpretation is plain. I don't like this dream, Joseph. That your family should bow down to you. Such a thing is unseen. <laughs> you waste your strength for nothing, Reuben. I tell you, it's dry. You must go on to the pool of Shechem. Don't be a fool. The flocks must have water. Their flocks must have water. It's half a day to Shechem. You've no more brain than a donkey. Simeon! Let him come on. Let the fool come on. Enough, Judah! Look! Our beloved brother. Peace be with you, brother. Peace be with you, Joseph. Father sent me to see if I was well, bringing back news. As you can see, there's a drought. Drought? What drought? There's water at Shechem. Yeah, Reuben, you are corrected. There is no drought. The well is dry. Ah, uh, yes. Look, it's moist. The well isn't dry, it's only blocked with sand from a storm. I'm amazed at your ignorance. Go down to the well, dig a little, you'll find water in abundance. You dig it for us. Stop! You must Get do up. this! Leave him alone! Judas! Ah. profit would there be in killing him? The slave trader happened to pass, going down into Egypt. No! But what would you tell our father? A wild beast attacked our poor brother and carried his body away to devour it. All we found was this. No. You betray your brothers, Reuben, in favor of that pampered boy. Is it true? Is it true? It's true, Father.
rarity. A Hebrew from the tribes of the hill shepherds in the north. Quick of wit and wily, of sinew like all his people. And likely to make an excellent slave once my lord has had the crushing of his infernal pride. Rarity indeed. Since it's well known that these hill shepherds disdain to sell their own kin unto slavery. There's peace in the north, so you cannot be a prisoner of war. How did you come by him? I, uh, I bought him from his own brothers. Do you have proof of this? I find it very strange. Not spending my money where there's a doubt of legal title. The bill of sale. Those are his brother's marks, my lord. How can I be sure of this? It's true, my lord. My brothers did sell me. Those are their marks. The slave speaks. <laughs> Husband, did you buy? Something unusual. A Hebrew. Well, he's a scrawny looking boy. Mm -hmm. We've made no mistake. Only a fool would have kept them, my lord. You think it was a test? Clearly, you're no fool. That doesn't prove I'm honest. Honesty is written in a man's eyes. This wine tastes like camel dung. I noticed that the wine is stored out in the open, my lord. Is it? Yes, it's in the full glare of the midday heat. Perhaps that might account for the sourness. Hmm. I'm captain of the guards of the pharaoh, to the king of kings himself. He makes great demands on me, so I have little time to look to the management of my household, to the records and accounts of my estate. What work did you do before your brother sold you? As with all my people, I tended my father's flocks and herds. But my great love was for learning. Learning? That's good. Very good. Go to the kitchens, my servants will feed you. Joseph, why did your own brothers sell you? They were jealous of me. I'm unjust to them. I made them angry. Fault was partly my own. Go now. Well, I seem to have made a bargain. He can read, write, and calculate. And uh, he's honest. A bargain? Really? They're to be sold today, but I'll get nothing for them. The sheep yield but little wool, and their meat isn't fit for the dogs. As for the, the goats, the hides are useless, and they give no milk. Yet yeah, they have good grazing, the very best. Then the fault must lie in the breeding. If my lord were to buy good rams, the quality of the stock would improve. And that's my lord's profits. Before, the Lord Potiphar made nothing from his flocks. Now, what's your secret? 
I know a man who would pay a pretty price for it. While I am my lord's slave, it's not mine to sell. Listen to me, or my household. From this day, Joseph has charge over you. You will obey him in all things as you obey me. All that I have, I give to him to order and direct as he may decide. He will answer to no man save to me. Do you understand? Joseph, my husband is at the palace. Servants will say nothing. Wait a few minutes and then come to me. I cannot, my lady. You're very handsome, Joseph. Quite exceptional. I can't be the first to tell you that. Perhaps not. And you? Do you never desire a woman? Of course you do. I beg you, cease from this, my lady. You think you can defy me because you have my husband's favor? You're still a slave. I could destroy you with a word. Then do it. Better that than betray my God and my father. Joseph! Joseph, forgive me. Forgive me, I spoke in anger. Tell me of your father. His name is Jacob, I think. Yes. He is old now. But strong still. Full of wit and vigor. His knowledge of God beyond that of any other man. From my earliest childhood, he's tried to pass that on to me. He succeeded well. This separation from him must be very hard to bear. It is. I love him with all my heart. Don't despair, Joseph. Never despair. Wait a little, then come to me. Give it to him yourself. Well, how is it then that I have it if what I say is a lie? I tell you, he sought to take me by force, and when I resisted, he ran in fear. Look! Joseph! Take him to the cell. What?
Get used to them. After a while, you won't feel them. You'll never guess what I once was. Oh, no, he's off again. Chief cupbearer to the Pharaoh himself, the King of Kings. But I had enemies. Men who envied my position. Yeah, more likely they were tired of your endless babble. <laughs> <laughs> they whispered against me to the Pharaoh. Lies. Poisonous lies. But he believed them. I'm an innocent man. <laughs> yeah, we're all innocent here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where's your God now, eh, Joseph? <laughs> Joseph, perhaps you can help me interpret this strange dream. I dreamed I saw a vine with three branches that budded and blossomed and ripened into clusters of grapes. And the Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I squeezed the grapes, and the juice ran into the cup and filled it to the... You! Come with me! get no interpretation now, Chief Cupbearer. <laughs> These are my own beasts. You will tend them. In return, you will have privileges. A room to yourself. Good food. There may be yet another way my lord could enrich himself. As governor, my lord may put the prisoners to work and keep the profit of the labors for himself. Well? Because they are starved and diseased, they are too weak to work in. The Lord profits nothing from them. Only give them good food and a clean place to sleep. My Lord would gain greatly. You dare to bargain with me? Take him. The Pharaoh will discover your innocence. He will send to release you. This will come to pass in three days. That is the interpretation of your dream. Thank you, Joseph. Very well. But I want a quick profit. This is yours. You can wear it. If I may cleanse it, I'd prefer to wear this, my lord. Why? So that the lord may not cast me down once again for my vanity. Three days, exactly. Where does this power of yours come from? I wish you well, my friend. Don't forget me. <laughs> Why do I pay you? I pay you to solve the mystery of my dreams, so they cannot haunt me, nor torture me, nor rob me of my sleep. Yet of this dream you can tell me nothing. Why? Majesty, yes. Silence! Majesty, Majesty. I, I once met a man who could interpret dreams. I'm told you can interpret dreams. Sometimes, Majesty, if God so will it. 
This is my dream. I saw seven fat cattle come down to the Nile to drink. They were goodly beasts and fair to look upon. And I saw seven lean cattle, hideous to the sight, with their bones sticking out of the skin, their eyes evil. And then the lean ones turned on the fat ones. With their rotting teeth, they tore their flesh. They ground their bones into dust and devoured it and lapped up the blood with their tongues. Well, this is the interpretation. The seven fat cattle are seven years of good harvests. The seven lean cattle are seven years of drought and famine that will follow. All of the stores of the good years will be eaten up as the lean cattle ate up the fat. Then Egypt will starve. <laughs> save his people from famine. Oh. In each of the good years, take one-fifth of the harvest to preserve it. Impossible. Great storehouses would have to be built and guarded, thousands of them. Besides, I know my people, they would cheat all of them. It could be done, Majesty. A man might do it if he had wisdom, discernment, and diligence. And you gave him the power. Power. You have the power to interpret dreams. What arts do you use? Oh, none, Majesty. The power is the power of my God. I have none. Your Majesty is right. It is impossible. I wonder. As your majesty's chief minister, I know it's to be impossible. Potiphar, tell me what you know of this man, Joseph. ring upon his finger. He will be known as Zaphinath Panea. He is your master. Bow to him. Even the river. You must go down into Egypt. All of you. There's food to be bought there. At a price. Not matter the price, Judah. We've gold enough. And we can't eat it. You have a quick tongue, Benjamin. Too quick for your years. Ah, wait till you see me bargain with those Egyptians, Simeon. 
You're not going. All of us, my father said. Yeah, you're too young, Benjamin. I may be younger than my brothers, but I'm twice their wit. You stay here. You're too indulgent with him, father. My lord's off on that pannier. My people starve. I beg my lord to sell me food so that they may live and not perish. Has he the price? He has, my lord. Then you may buy, according to your need. My lord is great and merciful. Where do you come from? The land of Canaan, in the north, my lord Zathanapunea. You have the look of spies. Spies, my lord? Yes. Spies come to see if the land be clothed with plenty or naked with famine, whether Egypt be strong or weak. No, my lord. We are honest men, the sons of Jacob. There's drought in the north. We come to buy food for our people. They are starving. We bring gold. You hill shepherds never starve. You're too canny. You must be spies. Oh, my lord. I swear we are honest men. Is your father, Jacob, yet alive? He is, my lord. How many sons has he? Eleven, my lord. Eleven? I see only ten. Our brother Benjamin is but a boy. Too young to make the journey. I'll sell you food. Just so much as to keep your people from immediate want and to ensure your quick return to Egypt. When you do return to prove your honesty, you will bring the boy with you. You. What's your name? Simeon, my lord. Take him. I will keep him here as a surety. If you fail to return bringing the boy, he dies. What are you doing? No food left. We must take some to make bread. We've far to go still. We must have our strength. Reuben! It's the money we paid. There's been some mistake made here. This was no mistake. This was done so that the Egyptian could call you thieves. It's a trap. I won't send Benjamin. Father. Silence. My brother Simeon will die if you don't send me. And if I do, and this Egyptian harms you, it will bring my gray hairs down in solid to the grave. They already hate me because you favor me above them. Now you'd make them hate me more? You must send me. You must. My lord. The feast has been prepared as my lord commanded. They're eating now. Though with no great appetite. Except the boy. This is the boy? This is Benjamin, my lord.
Yes, he has the look of his brothers. There is no deception. There was a mistake made when last we were here. Yes, I know of it. It was a mistake. My own cup you've been drinking from, Benjamin. It's very fine, my lord. I never saw the like. Pharaoh himself gave it to me. Huh? You have proved your honesty. Take what food you need and go in peace. Reuben, some wine. Now I'm hungry. Enjoy. Get your bed. So, you reward my lord's kindness with treachery. You return evil for good. My lord, I swear by the God of my father, we are innocent. You, perhaps, and your brothers. But the boy, how can he be innocent? I swear I am. Then who concealed it? Did my servants... Did I? Then who? The case is clear. You and your brothers may take what you bought and go back to your country. The boy I will keep as my slave. Oh, my, Jesus, God. my lord, my lord, I beg of you to let him go. Take me in his place. The loss of him would kill my father. There was another boy, Joseph. He was lost. How was he lost? In the desert, wild beasts devoured him. My father's grief was terrible. Take Benjamin from him and you kill him. He's a good man, the best of men, wise and gentle in his ways. Leave us! Your brother Joseph was not killed. You and your brothers sold him into slavery. Here is the bill of sale. Written proof of your treachery. How do I come to possess this, do you think? Can't you guess? Reuben? Simeon? I am Joseph. I am your brother. My mother was Rachel. My father, Jacob, wrestled with God himself at the fort of Jabbok. No. Yes, Reuben. How could I know this? Unless I am Joseph. Oh, no. No, don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. I know that Benjamin is innocent. My own servants placed the cup in his sack. You have nothing to fear. See? See? I forgive you. All of you. How can you forgive us? It was all God's purpose. 
He brought me here so that I could save my father's people from famine. Simeon. Reuben. All is well. All is well. Joseph. Judah. Judah. Go to your father. Tell him his son Joseph is alive. Tell him to bring the people down into Egypt. That they may live. My beloved son. <laughs> you all remain in Egypt and live with me. I and you, the staff of Abraham. Father, brothers. <laughs> These Hebrews will soon be more numerous than your own people, Majesty. They will overwhelm us. Your Majesty must be yet more severe against them. How? I make them suffer, they bear it. I seize their gold, they heap up more. I starve them, they flourish. What can I do? From each family, take the male children as they're born and kill them. Nothing less will serve, Majesty. So be it. My name is Amram. This is my wife, Yochaved, my son, Aaron, and my daughter, Miriam. What of your other son? God has not blessed us with another. No? People here say that your wife was with child. She's not so anymore. Therefore, the child has been born, a male child. No. And the people have lied. The people have said nothing. I have no other child. They'll return. It's 
no use, Yakovet. Someone will talk. They'll find him. We must hand him over to your father's soldiers, my lady, at once. We are sworn to report such a child. Beautiful to look upon. <laughs> See how he stops his crying at my touch. I'll keep him. Defy the Pharaoh's order? Who better to defy than the Pharaoh's daughter? But how will my lady feed the child? I'll pay a wet nurse, of course. My lady, who are you? How dare you come in here, girl? Don't you know it's forbidden? I know a woman who can nurse him. She, too, is a Hebrew. Are you certain she'd be willing? I'm certain, my lady. Very well. I'll pay her. She'll have my protection. My lady is very good. There's a condition, though. When the child is well grown, you will bring him to me at the palace. He will live with me and be as a son to me. Knowing this, do you think the lady will still be content to nurse him? I'm sure she will, my lady. <laughs> It's agreed, then. His name will be Moses, because I drew him up out of the water. Better the boy had died. Father! As for you, Miriam, running off without a word, we were half mad with worry. I know your heart, Yakovet. It's a tender, loving heart. When the time comes to give the child over, it will be torn in pieces. As if by his death. You're a good man, Amram. You pray every day, you love God. But you don't know him. I see his hand in this. This will bring you nothing but sorrow, nothing but pain. Moses. What a fine looking boy he is. You know you're to live with me here, Moses. I have no son of my own, and you'll be my son. And I'll love and care for you like your own mother. I promise. Moses. You're summoned to your mother, I hear. Yes, Majesty. We'll see you later, then. I will follow, Majesty. Good. A perfect likeness. Most impressive, Majesty. Mm. But over time... Won't the rains and winds efface it? Only the hardest and the most durable stone has been used in construction, Majesty. Hard enough to last a thousand years? Ten thousand, Majesty. 
How can I stay silent? When I see how the Pharaoh persecutes and enslaves these people. These are my people. No! Everything I have, I owe to you, Mother. But how can I forget that I was born a Hebrew, that I have a brother and a sister who are Hebrew? On your feet! Down there. He's dead, Majesty. At whose hand? Moses. Did you do that? I meant only to teach him a lesson, Majesty. What lesson? That the life of an Egyptian is worth less than that of the Hebrew. This cannot go unpunished, Majesty. My Lord Moses enjoys great favor and high position. But he's not about the law. He's a murderer. The law, Majesty. Yes, yes. Seize him! Seize him! Stop him! Shift these mangy beasts of yours out of here, right now, or we take them as the price of the water they've had. My father has paid your lord for rights to this water. He paid a certain sum, yes, but not enough. He paid what was agreed. My father may be willing to pay more. That's a matter they must settle between them. You go now, girl. Or we may take more than your beasts. My friend here has a taste for another sort of flesh. He's a strong man. I couldn't stop him. How strong? your father Jethro that my lord demands a better price for the water. I and my sisters are greatly in your debt, sir. What is your name? Zipporah. journeyed long, sir. Very long. Is your destination far? I've had no destination. Until now. There was a time when this petty lord would have crawled on his belly to me. I was high priest of this land of Midian, with power of life and death over the people. It's a trick, isn't it? Hmm? 
the breaking of a stone. It's done by art, not strength. Yes. Everything's a trick. But I'm grateful to you, sir. My daughters are precious to me. They're all my wealth. And all I now desire in the way of riches... It's true. My father was a rich man. I remember the fine house we lived in, the temple where he ruled, the idols and people bringing the offerings of precious stones and gold. All this he gave up. Why? It was when my mother died. He saw that the idols he worshipped were false. He knew that the gods had no power. He's right in that. The idols are false. But there is a god, Zipporah. I wonder. There's order in the heavens, Jethro. Where does it come from? It must come from God. What could a man know of a god so mighty as to make all this? Nothing. A wise man, if he would be happy, must be content. The love of a woman, the joy of a family, and the freedom of the hills. send you to the Pharaoh of Egypt to deliver my people out of his kingdom. Who am I that I could do this? I will be with you. If I go to the people and tell them their God has sent me and they ask what is his name, how will I answer? I am If they do not believe me, if they say it was not God who spoke to you. The staff you have in your hand, cast it onto the ground. Father, 
The old pharaoh is dead. And his daughter. She who took me up out of the Nile, whom I called mother. She is dead too. I must go. Go! You ask me to let your people go. You say your God commands this. You say he is powerful. Prove it. Show me a sign of his power. Take the staff. Throw it upon the ground. drugged to make it docile. Observe, Majesty. The sorcerer makes a movement thus with his left hand. <laughs> a trick, Majesty. Cheap sorcerers. Your god has no power. I refuse what you ask. For this, your people will pay a price. 
terrible price. Plague will descend upon Egypt. A blight will fall on your land. Behold, a miracle of God. <laughs> you will know the wrath of God. More sorcery, Moses. <laughs> Take the staff, and with it strike the waters of the Nile. Majesty? Not blood, but fine red sand. If you do not let my people go, that they may worship God, my God will send swarms of flies upon you and your people! <laughs> Nile turns red. Then comes the plague of frogs. The one is the consequence of the first. Then biting gnats. Then flies. Our gods have greater power. Answer, Majesty. I will not let your people go. I will never let your people go. Then hear what God says. I will go out through Egypt. Every firstborn in the land shall die, from that of the cattle in the field to that of the slave girl who sits at her loom, even to that of the pharaoh who sits on his throne. Then will such a cry rise up as was never heard. Will be again. At sunset, you must take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood of a lamb and then touch it to the doorposts and the lintel. God will pass over your houses and no harm will come to you. <laughs>
has pursued the Majesty, destroy them all. And you cannot. You can. They march across the desert towards the sea. Towards the sea? Yes. They're fools. They don't see that it's a trap. Their God, how can they stand against the might of your armies? Huh? The innocent blood of your son cries out for vengeance. Destroy them all, Majesty. How many, Joshua? A great army. We must turn back into the desert. Fight them in the open. It's our only chance. If we stay here with our backs to the sea, we're lost.
was no hope. When others turned aside, when all around you was despair, you held to the faith. <laughs> uh, I heard of the marvels you and your brother performed in Egypt. Uh, the tales come as far as Midian. To the ends of the earth, I should think. It was trickery, Jethro. All of it, it must have been. I wonder. Do you? The laws that we make for ourselves are shallow, feeble things. They perish quickly. But the laws that came from God... From God, Jethro. Yes. Such laws, from God, they would endure forever. to approach the mountain. No one. Don't be afraid. I am afraid that without you, at my side, I'll fail.
do you want? Where's Moses? Why doesn't he return? He will return. His god has deserted him. And he's deserted us. No. Now the gods of Egypt will have vengeance. You fools! God made a path through the sea to save you. He has made water flow from the bare rock so that you might drink. He has sent his manna from heaven so that you might eat. What more proof do you need of his power? Where is Moses? Where is he? You can't answer. They can't answer. I say we must set up an idol to appease the gods of Egypt, or we will be destroyed. No! Wait! No! No, listen to me! Wait! Where will you get the gold to make your idol? From the people. When you have gold enough, come again. This is wrong. People will never give up their gold. It gives me time. is the law of God. The God you have defiled! This is a stiff-necked people. But from the depth of my soul, I pray you pardon our iniquities, our sins, to take us for your inheritance. Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, I pray you grant them this. If I have not, blot not them but me from the book that you have written. shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any idols, nor bow down and worship them. You shall not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God. 
Observe the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Six days shall you labor, but the seventh day is for the Lord. Honor your father and your mother, that you may live long, and that all may go well with you in the land I will give you. You shall not murder, neither shall you commit adultery. Neither shall you steal. Neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his house, nor his servants, nor his flocks, nor anything that is his. Wandered the desert forty years, Joshua. Because the people rebelled against the Lord. Yes, the people have sinned. I too have sinned. When the Lord spoke to me in Midian, out of the bush that burned and was not consumed, I doubted him. For that, he punishes you now. Yes. And it is just. I accept it. I cannot go with you. You will lead us. No. I am not worthy. The Lord's will, Joshua. 